Greetings and welcome to NATE module 2 unit 9 concerned with development phase of ADDIE. In the last unit, we understood the process of designing and managing item banks for quizzes, assignment, tests and semester and examinations of an engineering course. Item banks involves lot of work but when it is well done and well managed can have a significant influence on the quality of uh, testing first because of quality of testing is good, quality of learning will also be good. In this unit, we try to understand the sub process of development phase for an engineering course. So, if you recall the phases of ADDI is analysis, design and development. Now, we will look at development phase. Development phase consists of these activities which include identifying the delivery technologies, choosing instruction type, development of instructional material and identification and selection of learning material. These are the four activities. Now, let us look at uh, delivery technologies. Before you do, before you start planning for uh, your course in detail, you have to make a choice about the delivery technology. What kind of classroom do I have? What kind of technology do I have access to? For example, if the students have to bring their own devices, what kind of devices they should bring and so on. So, let us look at uh, some of them you can there can be many more type of delivery technologies. First thing is classroom with blackboard, whiteboard or a smart board. Smart board is a bit rare, but uh, it will come under the same category. That is uh, you have a blackboard or a whiteboard on which the teacher writes. Classroom with LCD projector, electronic classroom with LCD projector students with laptops and smartphones and or smartphones you can say and electronic classrooms with a learning management system. Let us look at the first one. Yeah, Before we go to the first one, the choice and access to delivery technology will have a great influence on the instruction because you have to plan everything based on your choice of the both devices, environment, everything. And these days you have several information and communication technologies uh, tools are available to us. Some of them in open source, some of them can be acquired by the college or university. The university level uh, ICT tools will be quite expensive that is why many universities hesitate to use that. But as an individual teacher you can you can uh, use some of these tools we will look at the possibilities. And what happens when you use these tools one of the requirements is teacher has to either create his own material or uh, develop the whole uh, material that he wants to use in teaching in the classroom or he can curate the material from the internet and so on and he can make this readily available to the students. Because once it is available in electronic form, it has several possibilities. The time the students take in drawing a diagram in the classroom or writing a lot of notes that is essentially making copies of what the teacher is writing on the board lot of time can be saved. And all these technologies have their advantages obviously, otherwise technology would not wouldn't even be considered provided the instruction is adjusted to the technology. You they have to be really compatible with each other that is you have to take the, uh, the teacher has to make use of the possibilities that are created by the technology. Now, let us start with blackboard and whiteboard. 
this technology is the oldest and most prevalent I think last maybe 150 years some variant of blackboard uh, is being used that still people prefer vouch by this. Yes, there are some advantages, but there are also many limitations and it is uh, also sometimes I feel a bit meaningless to keep on hanging on to that uh, saying uh, the other technologies do not meet or give the advantages of the blackboard. The major advantage of uh, blackboard or whiteboard is the pace and sequence followed generally syncs with the delivery of new information giving enough time to the students to understand that is the major advantage. That is while the teacher is writing on the board there is a certain sequence and he can also write only at particular speed. So, to that extent when the whether the student writes that down in his uh, notes or just keeps on watching there is certain time available for the student to kind of absorb and consider the knowledge that is presented and also evaluate and see whether he has full there is time to really internalize whatever that has been uh, there that, that has been presented. But of course, there is one single pace at which the teacher kind of presents the information. If, if you if there are students with very poor cognitive abilities obviously, the time is not adequate and people with higher cognitive abilities they will find it is too slow. So, so it has its uh, limitations as well and this one suits the courses that are dominantly mathematical or all kinds of equations have to be written then in that case the uh, the blackboard is still the ideal one and to adapt it to a an LCD projector will can be done, but it takes more effort and it requires some special uh, abilities to do that. And what happens in a blackboard if you have a very complex diagram to be drawn on the board first of all it takes a lot of time not every teacher will have the uh, drawing ability to present a neat picture on the board. And when it is very complex there are likely to be errors creeping in and once errors are again noted down by the student obviously, the, that means you have transferred some wrong information and student sometimes the students may stay with that may not be able to correct that. And when you have descriptive courses where a lot of information is pre being presented then what happens what you can write on the board is only key phrases all the inter and even the student may not be able to cap keep on writing down what the teacher is, is speaking. So, even for descriptive courses blackboard may not be the best. Some variant of smart board it enables the teacher to capture the material presented on the board as an image. That is whatever teacher writes on the board using a pen related to the smart board the in the end that image can be captured it has the facility to capture and maybe you can make photocopies of that. So, when smart board came on the scene maybe about 20 years ago it was considered a great boon but somehow that kind of thing did not uh, catch. It also allows the teacher to interact with the material projected on as slides. If you are project if you are projecting through using an LCD projector onto the smart board what can be done smart board let us say after the image is presented the teacher can interact with that highlighting things circling key elements in that and so on all that also can be captured. But uh, it is adopted in some places, but it is use has not become that very popular. Now, come the classroom with LCD projector which 
many of you may already be using that. It permits the user to organize information to be presented in a better manner and allows her or him to show complex pictures readily. Whether it is equations, pictures, sometimes anim animations also can be projected and so on. So, the material can readily be presented in a much much better fashion, but of course, that requires a lot of pre-planning. What can happen if it is connected to the working computer of the of the teacher? He can even simulate something and something can be dynamically pre presented on the screen. So, that is one advantage and the slides presented can be converted into doc or pdf format and you can share it with the students. To convert that is pretty easy and you can share it with the student these days and the pace at which information is delivered can make some students mentally drop out. If you are uh, narrating or presenting the information at a fast pace because that is available to you right in front of your eyes. So, you are likely to go a little faster, when you go faster you may lose your students, they may go out of step. Once you student goes out of step at some point, he or she will mentally drop out that is one disadvantage and also it requires some discipline, you should not make the crowd slides too crowded and sometimes the teacher can end up merely reading the slide, just face in the opposite direction the towards the screen and start reading the slides and you cannot have a worse situation than that. Right in the first slide itself you will lose all your students mentally. So, one has to be careful. Uh, in my experience some people acquire some habits, if they happen to be bad habits somehow they keep on hanging on to that. For example, make, making the slides crowded which is a in my opinion is a bad thing. Now, let us look at electronic classroom, it is a next level and first of all electronic classroom can make this uh, engagement of the student um, much significantly enhanced. First of all slide material can be shared in advance with the students, students can write their own notes and tag them with the slides. So, what happens the if the information is already shared and the students do have the internet devices with them in the classroom that is what electronic classroom is. They not only have their laptops or, uh, or smartphones or tablets with them, in such a case what happens the material is already available made available to them. Whatever you want to note while the teacher is presenting the slide material they can write they can just type sh short points on that and can be tagged down to the slide uh, with which the information is being dealt with. And, and what can happen is teacher can also ask questions and make all students respond and immediately discuss the responses. Of course, this particular thing if you have an LMS also part of it learning management system as a part of it, it becomes much easier even otherwise through emails the students can directly communicate with the teacher right in the classroom. So, you require corresponding Wi-Fi facility for students to communicate with the teacher and another thing is you can these days simulation is a very is becoming a very powerful tool in many subjects to learn anything. That is what essentially you are trying to explore what happens if something is changed in a given system. So, one way of my learning the behavior of the system especially when a system has several nonlinear elements in that or it has several feedback loops in that. It is not very easy at all, first of all modeling itself can become difficult. The models may contain very highly nonlinear equations and nonlinear equations may or may not have 
closed form solutions. In that case, the only tool that you have best with you is to simulate. Sometimes even simple uh, equations can be simulated to find out what happens when a parameter is changed, which will not be very obvious by looking at the equation itself. And for this you have powerful simulation tools, there are a whole bunch of them depending on what you have access to, uh, the instruction can be planned accordingly. But one thing about uh, electronic classroom is it requires considerable planning and work on the part of the teacher to make the classroom time effectively utilized. I can go on simulating, I can go on showing all kinds of things on the screen, but uh, one has to be very or uh, rather spend lot of time in trying to ensure that it is leading to true learning by all the students. Now you can also have even if the even if uh, the institute does not have an LMS at the college or institution level, a teacher can have his own LMS because LMS like Moodle which is an open source tool. So, the teacher himself on his own laptop can create many activities that engage students. For example, one of the easiest thing is to conduct a quiz. Quiz is generally you have you ask 5 to maximum 10 questions which are the say, what do you call multiple choice questions or give a not even short answer fill in the blank kind of thing. And what happens is even if you conduct a quiz to find out what they have done to analyze that it takes lot of time for the teacher because if he has to look through 50, 60 responses it takes a lot of time. And the very purpose of uh, using quiz as a what do you call as a formative assessment tool is not served. You can always you can always use a quiz as a, a what you call summative ins assessment instrument, but that is a different one. But the main purpose of quiz is to find out at what level the students are with respect to certain concepts let us say. So, you want to get the result immediately and also you want to give feedback immediately. LMS like Moodle provides a wonderful uh, possibility of uh, creating such uh, quizzes and uh, looking at the responses of the students. And if the students are responding using their internet devices, then what can happen is you can exactly see how what set of students are going completely off the track. You can directly address them. It is a one it is a wonderful thing to be used in the class. And also LMS will uh, enable the teacher to keep track of students performance without excessive effort. And it enables the teacher to create documentation as needed by NBA or NAC that is another issue. So, I would suggest to, to all of you even if your college already has some kind of an LMS has come to agreement with or what you call academic management system, it will provide all kinds of tools that we are talking about. Even if it you do not have such a thing, at an individual teacher level you can learn how to make use of something like a Moodle because you can readily download and it requires a small amount of training. I am sure you can find somebody who can help you in that and set up your uh, uh, Moodle site for your course. What do you call instruction types for want of any other word? We use the word instruction type. The because finally what is it that we are trying to do in development phase? We are trying to develop instruction material and learning material. So, first thing is we said the choice of the technology will directly influence the kind of instruction material that you have to prepare. Then the next issue is what instruction type are you following? There are four types we are talking about, one can think of more, but these are the dominant ones. 
face to face or direct instruction in the classroom sessions. This is still the most dominant method of uh, instruction. I should not call it method of instruction, type of instruction. And you have blended learning, flipped classroom, online courses and still later version is the MOOC. Now, face to face direct instruction obviously, this is the most popular type and it can use any of the delivery technologies that we have used that we have mentioned. So, what happens is the direct instruction now is categorized further depending based on the delivery technologies te technology that is chosen. And here teacher student interaction plays a very important role in all learning activities in the classroom. And here what happens is there is a level of comfort felt by both the students and the teacher because the students right from their childhood they are used to that mode of doing and the teacher because of that is also used to uh, using face to face instruction. And when you deviate from that both the students and teacher may feel a bit uncomfortable. So, this is a uh, this becomes an important issue whenever you want to deviate from this face, face to face uh, type of instruction. And because students are always they are all sitting in one classroom, they are also interacting with, interacting with each other, they, they know each other even when they go out of the class they are interacting with each other. So, you automatically what happens that very type of interaction facilitates creating learning communities. That means, 3 or 4 will get together and say they start sharing the information, start uh, explaining to each other, uh, start solving problems together and so on. So, learning communities can get formed more easily and any deviation from this as I said is not going to be easily acceptable and even practically any institute that I have seen we talk about all kinds of other technologies, but in the end the face to face or direct instruction seems to be the main choice of uh, the faculty. Now, blended learning is an approach that combines traditional place based classroom that is students do come to a specific place there is an identified classroom and then the teacher is also in front of them. So, it is a kind of face to face interaction is possible, but it also has all the educational materials uh, is available online. So, what can happen is once that means, you also facilitate students to interact with each other online. That means, uh, learning communities are, are facilitated to form online. That means, they do not have to sit across the table and talk to each other, but the present day technology allows you to communities to form online and lot of work can be done online. And how the classroom time is utilized is left to the teacher and it requires certain amount of uh, practice and also students have to get used to it. But once you properly organize it was observed that uh, student achievement was much higher in blended learning uh, than with face to face uh, or fully online or fully face to face learning experiences. The possibilities will become many, but it is fairly well understood. But if you want to use it you have to dare the teacher has to dare to get into this and one advantage of blended learning is you if you are taking 4 lectures per week you can cut it down you do not require that much of face to face interaction. You can cut down to as low as 1 hour per classroom for face to face provided that the teacher is available for interaction online or is able to answer questions as and when the students raise them, but you do not have to be in the classroom. So, you can blend the online learning 
with the classroom learning. Now, another modification of this essentially flipped classroom is normally what do we do? We, we present the material, new material or demonstrate the new knowledge in the classroom and generally ask the students to study back at their hostels or in their rooms and also solve some problems. That means, they are solving problems outside the classroom and in the classroom information is transferred to them. Flipped classroom is essentially you are switching this. You, you are uh, the problems are solved in the classroom in the presence of the teacher whereas, the, the material that you are trying to present in the classroom is made available online and the students do read on that. They do not, there is no need to prepare copies of the what the teacher writes on the board because the entire material can be made available to the students online. So, the activities normally considered as homework are moved into the classroom. So, in a flipped classroom students watch online lectures, collaborate in online discussions or carry out research at home while engaging in concepts and problem solving in the classroom with the guidance of the teacher. This is what flipped classroom is. And when you plan it properly when it is done, yes there are enough number of uh, examples to show that it can be very effective. But as we said unless the teacher really takes it believes in that and prepares accordingly, it, it will not be easy to make it a success. Then come the next next level online courses would mean that the teacher does not even come to a in a class and there is no face to face interaction at all. Okay. The, the way we are now doing in NPTEL courses the video sessions are recorded and they are made available to the students. Lecture wise lecture can be broken into smaller units they are all available for the student and they can listen to it as many times as possible at their own pace at their own uh, places and so on. And even the assignments everything is given online and there is a method of uh, even conducting what you call both formative and summative assessment online and the, the software tool itself will evaluate the performance of the student that is complete online. But the when it normally when we call it online, it is meant it refers to a what, what do you call the way we conduct our courses in any regular program. Let us say 60 students are in a batch, I am conducting a course, except that everything is online, I am only dealing with the same set of 60 students here. And what can happen when I am uh, limiting myself with a small number of smaller number of students, then I can also ask them to write reports, I can ask them to submit uh, written uh, responses to certain questions which they are made available online to me either image form or a text form and I can evaluate and do, but there is no direct face to face interaction with that. So, if it is limited to the students who are registered with my course at any given time, online course can have lot of uh, advantages. Except of course, because student is not directly face to face interacting with the teacher, there is the trapo cannot be easily created. There are methods to do that, but that again requires lot of effort. The next level uh, type of instruction is MOOC. That is now it is not limited to the students who are registered for my course in a, in a particular institute, but it is open to anyone and everyone throughout the world. So, and when you do that you have lot of issues related to conducting the assessment. They, those will have to be solved and then sometimes like we are doing in NPTEL most of the time the numbers are large you have to confine yourself to what do you call uh, computer evaluatable questions. 
that is multiple choice or filling the blank kind of uh, questions that becomes a limitation in some of the courses. Now having talked about delivery technologies and instruction types now we talk about instruction material creating instruction material is the main purpose of uh, development phase. So, instruction material is what the instructor uses for facilitating the student to achieve the stated course outcomes or competencies. So, essentially instruction material is what the instructors, instructor prepares for himself. It is not necessary for him to share this with everybody. He can write specific instructions to himself. And generally what happens this instruction material is also organized as per the CVOs or competencies that is one way of classifying that is for each competency or CVO or instructional unit as we call it for each instructional unit I will prepare my instruction material. Because what happens depending on the type of material uh, I am dealing with I may use different instructional methods instructional methods are different from instruction types. The instruction methods we will deal with in the later units. Okay. And instructional material will also depend on the time allocated to each element because the ins instruction will con consist of several instructional elements depending on the elements you choose depending on the nature of that element the material will also depend on the time allocated for each element. Okay. And what does it consist of instruction material in the end preparations or oral or PPT of the instructor wants to make or presentations he wants to make is that is the first one and the problem the teacher wants to solve in the classroom and quizzes the instructor wishes to conduct discussions proposed to be conducted in the classroom uh, and the group activities proposed to be conducted and any anecdotes you want to present and you can make a long list of that all the material will be first collected and then you organize depending on the kind of instruction method you are going to use. As we already said the choice of delivery technology and the instruction type chosen will influence the instruction design and instruction design formally will deal, deal with it in a, in a later unit and it will determine the structure and contents of the instruction material. Now we come to instructor and instruction design depending on the subject and preferences of the instructor even now intuitively different instructors are likely to handle their courses differently. But we are now talking about doing it in a structured manner. Every instructor prepares instruction material according to which she conducts the classroom activities. Instructional material has a plan of the sequence of activities first has a plan first and we will call it as a script. I am not coining the word script but in today's international context it is being seen as a uh, what do you call the word used is learning design for which you have a script and then you write the dialogues. So, instructional material has a plan of the sequence of activities which we are calling it a script and then how these activities are going to be executed are detailed out they are called you can call them as dialogues. So, instructor has a freedom to write the script while we use the word script but the instructor has complete freedom to write the script of each instructional unit and the script for each instructional unit need not be similar it depends on the nature of the topic that is being addressed in that particular course outcome. The framework within which script is written is called instruction design. Okay. We talk about that in later units 
and there are any number of uh, instructional design frameworks. We are not going to elaborate on all of them, but some of them we will, we will explore in the later units. Learning material uh, to understand it is easy. A learning material is what the learners use while listening to the in a teacher the learner has to have material which he can make use of it at home to kind of ensure that he understood everything that has been presented to him. So, normally it consists of uh, text, material selected from identified textbooks or internet sources and if necessary supplemented by material prepared by instructor that is all the learning material. And it is also selected or prepared for each instructional unit. And these days if you have any of the academic management system, they also permit curated material from textbooks and related video material from online resources uh, specifically what do you call pieced together by the teacher from the internet sources. Okay. So, that is a great advantage, but uh, provided you have the corresponding academic management system. So, that is about the development phase where ascent the final output of development phase is instruction material and the learning material. It takes considerable time obviously, but these are the two outputs of development phase. And in the next unit we try to understand the nature and sub process of implement phase which is the fourth phase of adding. Thank you very much for your attention.